Good morning. This is Pastor Mark Hendricks of Jasper Pentecostal Church, and I'm recording this video for uh, broadcast on uh, Sunday, uh, April 19th. And uh, I pray that uh, you are all uh, well and happy and uh, keeping uh, encouraged uh, in the Lord and uh, in uh, our resurrection hope in Christ Jesus. I uh, want to uh, uh, offer you a resurrection uh, encouragement and, uh, and Easter hope uh, uh, through my uh, ministry uh, in this recording. And I'm uh, going to be speaking uh, about the resurrected Christ from uh, Luke chapter 24. And uh, I have a couple songs as well that uh, I want to uh, sing for you. And hopefully you'll recognize them and uh, you can sing along with me uh, in your homes. And uh, we'll encourage ourselves together in the Lord and in our resurrection hope. Praise God. Uh, I have uh, two songs, uh, uh, a newer one and an older one, a contemporary one and uh, a more traditional one. The first one is called Forever uh, by uh, Carrie Jo. Glorified forever, 
sing alleluia, we sing alleluia, the Lamb is overcome, we sing alleluia, we sing alleluia, we sing alleluia, the Lamb is overcome, we sing alleluia. song that I want to sing for you, <clears throat> sing with you, I hope, <clears throat> is uh, He Lives, a traditional song in our hymn books, uh, number 106 in our Melodies of Praise hymn books, He Lives by Alfred H. Ackley. <clears throat> I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. He lives, He lives. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. for those notes. In all the world around me I see his loving care and though my heart grows weary I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, He lives, Christ Jesus. Jesus lives today. He walks. 
walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives with me. I welcome you uh, to take your Bibles and turn with me to uh, the book Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, and we'll read uh, verses 36 to uh, 43. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to uh, 43. Jesus appears to the disciples. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. Father God, I thank you for this uh, account of the resurrection of your son Jesus. And I pray that as we recall it uh, for ourselves today, that uh, you will speak into our hearts, speak into our hearts by the spirit of the living Christ Jesus, and uh, remind us that our Lord is living. He is alive in a new resurrection body. And uh, so uh, we have hope and uh, confidence uh, for tomorrow and for our own lives. And so I pray that you will speak to us this way through uh, this account in the Gospel of Luke. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the modern city of Jerusalem, just outside the walls of the old city, and near the southwest corner, stands an ancient church, which is called the Cenacle, or dining room, but which is also known as the upper room. This is the site that Christians have long revered as the place where Jesus had his last supper with his disciples on the Thursday evening before his crucifixion, and where he appeared to them and some other followers on the Sunday evening after his resurrection. I myself have visited the Upper Room Church on my 2017 trip to the Holy Land and the Holy City, and like all the other biblical sites, I viewed the place where the Lord appeared to the apostles with much wonder. The church is adorned with remnants from dif uh, different historical eras and successive conquerors of Jerusalem. The Gothic architecture and arches of the Cenacle are likely from the Christian Crusader period. But some of the stonework may be from the 2nd and 3rd centuries. In fact, little remains from the 1st century time of Jesus. And we can hardly be sure this was the site of the original upper room. 
But the biblical gospels do speak about a house with a large upper guest room. And other details from the Last Supper accounts indicate a site somewhere in the southwest corner of Jerusalem. Somewhere down here. At this place, at this house, within the upper room and behind the doors, the disciples have fearfully locked themselves. The resurrected Christ Jesus has appeared to his followers and has proven to them that he now lives in a glorious, immortal, and supernatural body. In Jerusalem, and late Sunday, or the first day of the week, the eleven disciples and other followers of Jesus are gathered together and are talking excitedly about the reports that some of them have seen the Master, when suddenly he appears and stands among them. Early this same day, Mary Magdalene and certain other women have come from the tomb of Jesus and have announced, amazingly, that his body has disappeared, and that two brightly clothed men have declared that he has risen from the dead. One of the leading disciples, Peter, has run to the tomb and has also found the body missing. But he has since returned to the place where the disciples are gathered and has reported that he himself has seen the Lord Jesus. Later and in the evening of the same day, the two more, uh, two more followers of Jesus arrive at the house in Jerusalem. And they tell the group gathered there that the Master has appeared to them also, and that he has walked with them on their way to Emmaus, and has even eaten bread with them. The disciples are still excitedly recounting their experiences and wondering over them when suddenly Jesus is standing there among them. And he greets them in the familiar terms of peace be with you, or in Hebrew and the language of the Jewish disciples, Shalom Aleichem. In verse 37, the disciples are terrified by this sudden appearance, and they immediately suppose that what they are seeing is a ghost or a disembodied spirit. The parallel account in the Gospel of Luke tells us that when Jesus makes this appearance to the disciples, they are gathered in a locked room because of their fear for the Jewish authorities. And so we understand that the disciples are nervous and wary. They have just been talking about the possibility that their master is alive. But seeing him suddenly, unexpectedly, and without any announcement, surprises and frightens the already fearful disciples. And in their fear and surprise, they quickly suppose that what they are seeing is the apparition of some disembodied human spirit, or even worse, some evil spirit that has come to harm or deceive them. But in verse 38, the familiar looking figure speaks to them. Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? In other words, the disciples should not be so frightened by his appearance, and neither should they be doubting that he has risen from the dead. Look at my hands and feet. It is I myself, Jesus says in verse 39. The hands and feet of Jesus bear the marks of the crucifixion. And they serve as compelling evidence that the one now speaking to the disciples is really their beloved master. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. 
the Lord welcomes the disciples to test their suspicions that he is just an apparition and to prove for themselves that he is only a spirit without physical and fleshly body. When he had said this, verse 40 says, he showed them his hands and feet. The master stretches out his hands and then his feet. <clears throat> this way the disciples can see for themselves the nail prints in the limbs of his body. And they can even touch the wounds with their own fingers if they like. But still, in verse 41, the disciples doubt, not because of fear, but now because of joy and amazement because the resurrection of their beloved master just seems too wonderful to be true. They dearly want to believe it is Jesus before them, but the disciples are afraid they may be disappointed. So Jesus asks them, do you have anything here to eat? And in verse 42, his disciples and uncertain hosts give their master a piece of broiled fish. In verse 43, Jesus takes the fish and eats it in their presence. This is something no apparition can do, and it confirms for the disciples that what they are seeing is a real, physically embodied person. And since he has appeared suddenly and from out of nowhere, it must be Jesus. Amazingly, risen from the dead and with a new supernatural sort of body. The resurrected Christ Jesus. The teacher and master in a marvelous and glorious new body. The crucified and sorely wounded man now perfectly healed and amazingly transformed into a being that suddenly appears and then just as suddenly disappears. One moment Jesus has existed in some mysterious, invisible and spiritual realm. The next moment he has stood before his disciples in a visible and physical body. And even though the master has died, has been buried, and has been inexplicably changed, he has still remembered his dear disciples and has returned to them in the house where they have been gathered. He is the same beloved Jesus, but now unimaginably transformed and marvelously glorified. He has also anticipated the surprise of the disciples and their fear at seeing him appear unexpectedly. And the master has greeted his friends with the familiar and reassuring words, Peace be with you. Yes, it is Jesus. But what sort of person is he now? What sort of man or being has the much-loved teacher and son of the common carpenter Joseph become? Who is it that can suddenly and bodily appear within a locked room? Who is it that can die, lie buried in the grave, and then on the third day awake from death itself? Someone amazing, to be sure. So amazing that instead of being overjoyed at seeing the Lord, his disciples have been frightened and worried they have seen a ghost. Even though Jesus has foretold his resurrection for them, even though the women have found his tomb empty and angels have announced he has risen, and even though he has appeared to the disciple Peter, the rest of them have still not believed. But isn't that like you and me and everyone who has ever pondered the resurrection of Christ? Isn't it like us to wonder over the gospel account 
and consider some strange and unreasonable explanation? Isn't it like us to imagine something like a ghost or apparition in order to explain the appearance of a real embodied person? Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Jesus has asked the disciples gathered in the locked room in Jerusalem. And the spirit of the risen Christ speaks similarly to you and me and urges us to be settled in our hearts and persuaded in our own minds about the truth of his resurrection. Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. Real flesh and bones the disciples could touch and handle, and actual wounds the doubter Thomas could put his finger into and feel. It is the resurrected Jesus himself who has appeared to the first disciples and who now speaks into our own hearts by his Holy Spirit. But still the disciples have scarcely believed that what they have seen because of their growing joy and amazement. And what has the Savior then asked them? Do you have anything here to eat? And the disciples have given the Lord a piece of broiled fish that he has readily eaten right there in their presence. And this, to me, is both powerfully convincing and wonderfully amazing. It certainly serves to prove that the Jesus who has appeared to the disciples is no ghost, no apparition, and no hallucination. None of those things can eat fish or devour any kind of food. But then what sort of bodily being is Jesus? Amazingly, he can consume food. He can take a piece of broiled fish, chew it in his mouth, and then swallow and digest it. But then suddenly, Jesus can disappear and return to the heavenly and spiritual realm where he has no need at all for earthly food to sustain him. So what sort of being is the risen Christ Jesus? In the words of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the body of Christ has been sown perishable, but it has risen imperishable. It has been sown with dishonor and shame, but it has risen in glory and everlasting nobility. It has been sown in weakness and contempt, but it has risen in power and triumph over death itself. It has been sown a natural body, but Christ has risen with a new spiritual or supernatural body. And you know what is just as amazingly wonderful as the glorified body of our own Savior Jesus? That you and I who have believed in the risen Christ, that we are destined to share in the supernatural likeness of the already resurrected Lord Jesus. Amazing, marvelous, Glory be to God the Father and to his risen and exalted Son, Christ Jesus, for our resurrection salvation. This past January, a new solar tele telescope laded, uh, located on the Hawaiian island of Maui released images of the surface of the sun in a stunning resolution detail 
never be, uh, before seen by human eyes. And here is one of those images. The images show uh, turbulent cells of hot so solar plasma that rise from the interior of the sun and then cool and sink below the surface again. The violently erupting cell formations are reportedly the size of the state of Texas and probably Alberta too. From these eruptions on the outer sphere of the sun come the solar flares that burst far out into space, that release waves of energy into the solar system and that affect our own weather patterns here on Earth. The Almighty Maker, who has made the Sun and our nearest star in this awesome and powerful form, has lately given his everlasting Son, Jesus, a marvelous and glorious body through his resurrection from the dead. And some wonderful day, the Almighty Father will give the same resurrection body to you and me and to all who belong to the Son by faith. And so, the Son of God and all us immortals like him, we will shine like stars in the heavens forever and ever. This is the glorious resurrection good news. Let me pray. Father God, we thank you for this glorious good news. We thank you for the glorious good news of our Savior Christ Jesus. We thank you for the glorious good news of his resurrection from the dead. And we thank you for the amazingly wonderful good news that that resurrection will be for us who belong to Christ Jesus by faith. Father God, I pray for anyone listening, watching this video, that they too will have faith to believe in the resurrection of Christ. That they will have faith to believe that this resurrection salvation is for them and they will believe and dedicate their lives to Christ Jesus. And Father God, I pray that at this time you will fill all of our hearts with resurrection hope and assurance. Father, we face a difficult time, the crisis of the coronavirus and uh, people dying from it and uh, people suffering from it, and uh, our whole nation suffering all kinds of trouble because of it. Father, may the resurrection hope of Christ fill our hearts. May we have the assurance that uh, our resurrected Lord will care for us and, uh, and keep us and help us through this crisis time. And Father, may we also have the resurrection assurance that regardless of what happens to us on the other side of the grave, on the other side of, the, of this life, there is resurrection life waiting for us in Christ Jesus. Father God, may we have that hope, may we have that assurance, and may it lift our spirits at this time. And so I pray in the name of our resurrected Savior Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And until next time.